Welcome to Metahead Christian Fellowship and our online live streamed service. Before we get started, there are a couple of things that we'd like you to know about. If you're accessing this on a Sunday morning between 10 and 11.30, you can take part in a very real way through our live chat option. This allows you to contribute and to communicate with others who are watching the service during the time that we are online. You can also put your prayer requests up, preferably early on in the service, and at the end we'll gather them all up and before we close someone will take time to pray specifically for those needs. Remember just a first name will do and a brief description, there's no need for, for detail, just to protect people's privacy. God knows all the details. You may have personal needs that you don't feel able or that you want to share on the live chat. That's not a problem at all because we have that covered. There is a prayer request button which will link you to one of our prayer team who you can share your request with and they will pray with you one to one confidentially and nobody else will be able to see that or to take part in that. If you're accessing this service at any other time through the internet, we have that covered too. Please send your request to office at mcfchurch.co.uk or just ask for someone to contact you. If you leave your contact details, then someone certainly will get in touch. With all that taken care of, let's enjoy all that God has for us today. He has something here for you. Welcome to MCF. Good morning everybody, great to see you here. I hope you're wrapped up warm in Sheffield because it feels like the weather has changed somewhat. Uh, but it's good to see you here this morning. We're here to worship God together. I'm just watching that intro video again for the umpteenth time and I kind of wonder, maybe we should have a little test about can you remember the words that come up on the video? No, lots of shaking heads, that's not good. Maybe we need to watch it more often. But it says at the end, we come together to worship. Uh, and that's what we're doing this morning, right? We're coming together to worship Jesus, who is alive today. Uh, and we're going to start by reading a few verses uh, from the Bible. We're going to read a few verses from Psalm 113. In fact, we're going to read all the verses in Psalm 113. But if you'd like to stand, please, if you're with us in the building. If you're watching at home, please get a Bible and read along uh, with us. I think we're reading from the NIV version. Psalm 113. Let's go. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be praised, both now and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to the place where it sets, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is exalted over all the nations, His glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God? the one who sits enthroned on high, who stoops down to look on the heavens and the earth. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes, with princes of people. 
He settles the barren woman in her home as a happy mother of children. Praise the Lord. Father, we want to come before you this morning, and those words are a psalm of perspective. Lord, they give us a perspective of who you are, that you're seated in glory. You are enthroned over all things. You are the Lord, our God. You are exalted over all nations. And for that, we say, thank you, God. Hallelujah. But also, Lord, it speaks of how you stoop down to us. And Lord, we want to thank you that you are a God who has come to us. We want to thank you this morning that you came in the person of your son, Jesus. And Lord Jesus, as we sing our songs and we listen to your word uh, and we just come together before you, we want to worship you, Lord, and open our hearts and our lives to you to speak to us and have your way. Amen. Amen. Chris. Good morning. Is that it? Be thou my
song, my granddaughter is watching this and she's going to be embarrassed now because I've been singing it all week for her. And I'm going to put it straight and I sing it wrong. Bless your holy name. Lord, we want to thank you. We look forward to that day when we'll sing praises to you for 10,000 years and evermore. Lord, but here on earth now, Lord, we want to worship you. We honour you, Jesus. We recognise, Lord, you are the one. And we come before you this morning and we worship you, Jesus. And we say, come and have your way, Lord. We love you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Can I take seats, please? 
Thank you. Just a few notices this morning, quickly. Uh, first of all, so once a month we do this missions offering where the, the, the money that's given that particular Sunday goes to work that we support overseas. Uh, and so last week we took up the missions offering for the work of Solomon Kings in Delhi, in India. Uh, and we just want to give thanks to God, really, because actually over £2,200 was given for the work last Sunday here. And we just thank God for that, you know. Let's give God a clap for that one. Thank, you know. Um, and, and I know, I guess we'll hear from Solomon in due course, but I know that will be a real blessing to them at this point in time. So thank you for everyone who, who gave to that. Right. Right. Thanks. Yeah, Jeff's just, Jeff's just saying Solomon lost his mother a little while ago. So, you know, uh, something like that will be a real blessing to him uh, and help them through this stage. Uh, cards. Yes. So over on my right, your left, you'll see a whole load of cards. Some of them are Christmas cards, some of them are other types of cards. That actually, uh, some of them made by Heather, Heather McElroy, who we'll be praying for a little bit later. Uh, and these are the cards that we were actually selling, if you remember, way back when, pre-pandemic. Is that BP? Before pandemic? I don't know. Um, uh, and so they're here. So if you would like to take a look after the service, preferably, not during, um, uh, and have a look. And if there's any you'd like, please just make a small donation in the box that's provided. And any monies given will go to the building fund to support the building project when it arrives. Okay? So that's the cards over here. The, the second set of cards are these here, which are the Meadowhead Christian Fellowship Christmas cards. Ooh, very good. Let's try that again. The Meadowhead Fellowship Christmas cards. <laughs> very, very good. Okay, so again, these are here for you to take and a donation uh, in the basket over here, please, for the work of the church. The, the paintings on the front and inside are actually done by a couple of the children in the church as well, so they're great, okay? So they really are genuine article, Meadowhead Christian Fellowship. If you want to use these for your own personal use in terms of giving cards, if people still do give cards, um, then please come and take one of these as well and make a donation in the basket at the end. That's great. Thank you. Hello. Oh, thank you. Yes, good point. The money for the cards is going to the Philippines Outreach Centre and Christy Perillo, okay, for, for these cards over here. The money for the cards over there are going for the building fund here. Ha, it's confusing. Sorry. Okay, so... Um, Reminder that 4 p.m. today, there'll be the, the Sunday afternoon 4 p.m. service um, for people who want to come and attend that. And at 7.30 tonight is the WhatsApp prayer meeting, all right? If you want to take part in the WhatsApp prayer meeting, then uh, let one of us know. But that's at 7.30 this evening. And finally, children's work. Children will leave after we've taken up the offering. And if you're new or a visitor here, please just follow the crowds and you'll see where we go for the different groups. All right. Neil. Where are you, Mr. Wardrop? Thank you. Neil has a, a notice for us, and then he's going to introduce a video. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I put some of these out on the seats. Uh, take note, I'm going to be doing a book table next Sunday, and I will largely be bringing the books that are in this leaflet. So if you are panicking about Christmas and the presents you haven't yet bought, don't worry, because they are all in here. You can get your cards this week, and you can get your presents next week. All right? Just one request. Please don't look at this when Karen Dunning is speaking to us a bit later, because I will be in trouble. All right? So, so please, anything you want from here, I, I hope will be available. If there's anything else you want to ask me about, just catch me afterwards. The other thing, uh, I'd just like to introduce a video um, about a month ago we were able to send some money as a church to Myanmar. Uh, the, the CLC work that, that we have there is in grave trouble because of all that's going on. There's COVID, which is rampant still. They haven't got any vaccinations. There's the military coup that you may have heard about. Uh, and then they've got uh, just terrible economic troubles. Uh, so as a church, we were able to send some money out. And our director there, Jacob Mung, has sent us a little video. He is softly spoken. So I hope you can hear him, but he's a lovely man doing a wonderful work there in Myanmar. So thank you. Hello, this is a special greetings from CLC Myanmar. Myself and my team would like to 
express our gratitude to what Meadowhead Christian Fellowship in Shaffle. And Pastor Jeffrey and Pauline have been a great friend of CLC Myanmar and for us uh, personally. And also Neil and Sheena have been a great friend and they are so kind and so helpful. And we appreciate that you have sent such a gift to and help us to continue our work and to meet the basic needs. And at this time around, and we are in uh, still COVID-19 and this causes a lot of uh, problem. And at the same time, uh, the regime, because of the regime and our economy collapse and inflation went up to 60% and that makes us very difficult to live our life here. And uh, the gift will definitely be helpful for the staff and as they are in need of uh, their basic daily needs and meals and then medical bills and uh, we really appreciate and thank you for your kind assistance and we pray that the Lord will continue to bless you and we look forward that the Lord will do such wonderful things in the days to come and thank you and God bless you all. It's always great when we uh, make up these uh, offerings and take them up and they, and they go overseas and then we hear back from the person on the ground uh, thanking us for it uh, and what, what, what goes on. And, you know, great that we hear that from Myanmar uh, and we are able to give to the work in Delhi last week. You know, and it's such an important part of the fabric of the church here in Jordanthorpe that we can do that for these places uh, around the world. Uh, so we're just going to pray for a minute for, for some of these people right now uh, uh, around about. Lord, we want to come before you and thank you, Lord, for what you have given us. And out of the much that you've given us, we're able to give for your work elsewhere, Lord. We pray for the work of Solomon in Delhi, uh, for the work of CLC in Myanmar, Lord. We just remember also today, Graham and Steph Reed on their way back from Zambia. Pray, Lord, you bless them and be a, a time of refreshing for them. We pray for Liv, Lord, for things in Malawi at the moment, that you will support her and make the way forward for her clear and strengthen her. Uh, and Lord, we pray for Nick and Erica in Zambia this, uh, this week, another week. We pray you'll keep them safe traveling around. And we pray, Lord, that you will continue to bless them uh, and give them words for the people there and strengthen and encourage them. And Lord, we just also want to remember today that there's a few people out and about. We pray for uh, Jonathan speaking at Crown of Life Fellowship this morning. We pray for Roland speaking at Living Waters. Uh, and we pray for Johnny and Erica down at the Oaks in Drumfield, Lord. And I uh, want to pray for all of these people, Lord, this morning that you will give them your words for the situation they find themselves in uh, and uh, your Holy Spirit will teach them uh, and lead them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. One of the great things we always used to do uh, is when we have the 60-second testimonies, and they've kind of dried up a little bit. I think people are frightened of videoing them and, and showing them, but I really want to encourage you, if you've got even little things that you see God doing in your life, it's so important that we share them together, because it grounds what we do here in reality, okay? It's about the reality of life. We've got a little one we're going to have now uh, from Mel, please, Pete. Thank you. I wanted to say what a blessing the Sparrows Nest Cafe is and how miraculous I think it is on Jordan Thorpe. When my car broke down, I had two babies with me. But if your car breaks down, isn't it wonderful that it happens on a Wednesday when the cafe is right there? One baby was picked up early, pre-arranged. The other baby's mum happened to be working from home, very nearby. I was able to pick her up and then I was able to stay in the cafe for hours, it was pouring outside, um, waiting for the breakdown truck and I was able to get free food, free coffee, company and everybody in there offered me a lift home as well once my car had gone and yeah just what an amazing blessing, thank you God. 
issue this morning. Uh, so, so just in case you didn't hear that, I mean, Mel was talking about how her car broke down when she had some children that she looks after in it, but it happened to break down outside Sparaness Cafe the day Sparaness Cafe was open and when it was open. And a few things that supported her and helped her through that situation, just something small like that, you know, it's great, isn't it? Our God is a God who helps us and is with us in those little things. So, uh, moving on, next, we're going to hear about the children's story. Karen's going to be speaking to us later from our next excerpt from the book of Esther. But first of all, we're going to watch the children's story for it. Last week, we found out about the message that Esther needed to take to the king. This was risky business, as the king, if he'd been in a bad mood, would have had Esther killed. Thankfully, as she approached him, he held out his scepter to indicate that she was okay to come and speak to him. He asked her what she wanted and offered her even up to half of his kingdom. Instead of telling the king directly what she wanted to do, she invited him and Haman to a meal that evening. After the meal, Haman was feeling proud of himself, having been the only person other than Esther and the king to be there. That evening... The king couldn't sleep, so he sent for his men to come and read him the book of history. During the reading, they read about how Mordecai had saved the king. The king remembered that he hadn't rewarded Mordecai for doing this, so he sent for Haman and said, What should I do to it for a man that I really want to bless? Haman thought that the king was going to do this for him. So he said, The king should use one of his own robes and one of his own horses and he should parade this man through the streets, saying this is what the king does for a man who pleases him. So the king said to Haman, go and do this for Mordecai. So Haman took Mordecai on the king's horse wearing the king's robes, saying, this is what the king does for any man that pleases him. This obviously embarrassed Haman. That evening, Esther had invited the king and Haman to come round for another banquet. And whilst there, the king said to her once again, What is it that you want? I will give you up to half my kingdom. So Esther said, If it pleases your majesty, I wish that you would save me and my people, for my people have been sold to those who would kill us. Who would do such a thing? King Xerxes demanded. Who would be so presumptuous as to touch you? Esther said, It is Haman who has done this thing. The king was so angry he stormed out and Haman began to beg for his life. When the king came back he ordered that Haman be taken and killed in the same way as he was going to kill Mordecai. Next exciting episode. Can't wait Karen to hear, hear about that. Uh, Okay, we're going to take up our offering now. If you're watching online, the instructions will come up there. If you're here in the building, the bags will be passed around. Uh, We're going to have the video about it first, and then Chris is going to lead us in worship. Thanks very much.
challenge we face in our lives today, Lord. I don't know where people are, Lord, but um, you're great in all those situations, Lord. Lord, I pray you would just come in this morning. Just touch us, Lord. Touch us in our hearts, in our minds, in our bodies, Lord. Lord, bring healing where it needs to be healed, Lord. Bring peace, Lord, where there's chaos. Father, we thank you. I'm 
about how um, though our sins are red like scarlet, he will make them white like wool. Uh, and he talks about the, the extent, and the thing about that verse is, we need to know that our sins are like scarlet. They're bad. We need to know the mess of our lives. We need to know the reality of, of, of what God says about us, of what we look like to him. And then, the yeah, second part of that verse is, we need to know the reality that God says, it's dealt with. It's dealt with. Amen. You know, Jesus dying on a cross, 
2,000 years ago, there's doubt with that sin in your life and in my life. Right? And so when we sing songs like that, and if we could do that again, Chris, this would be great. When we cry out to God, I'm desperate for you. Right? Sometimes, as particularly those of us that are English, we need to motivate ourselves to get desperate. Right? We want to be... We want to be controlled. We want to be managed. We want to be in our comfort zone. We want to be safe. Yes, Lord, I'm desperate for you. But the cry of this echoes like that verse in Isaiah that God has given his son, Jesus, that you and I might have life, full life. And if we turn away from that, our choice is that we we don't want it. But if we embrace it, if we turn our face to this God this morning, if we cry out to him, if we say, Jesus, I'm desperate for you, the promise of God this morning is that he will come to you. It's like knocking on that door and we open it and Jesus will come in and be with us. So I'd I'd like us to sing that again if we can, Chris. Uh, And when we get to that bit about crying out to God, I'm desperate for you. I want to encourage you. Get desperate this morning and see what God will do. Cheers, Chris. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. Your holy presence living. This is my daily bread. This is my daily bread. Your very word spoken to me. And I
can only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. by your glory what will my heart feel will I dance for you Jesus praying all of you be still will I stand in your presence to my knees will I fall will I sing hallelujah I'll be able to speak at all Imagine when that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine when all I will do is forever, forever worship you. Can only Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in awe of you be still? Will I stand in your presence to my knees? Will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to seek it all? Can only imagine. Can only imagine. Jesus, we look forward to that day when we'll be with you, Lord. But also, we just want to pray that some of that, Lord, would come now. That we want to pray, Lord, for your kingdom then to break now into this life. Lord, we want to pray, you know, there's so many situations we all face right across this room where we long and yearn for you to break in, Lord, and breathe the difference. So we pray, Lord, for your kingdom to come as you taught us to pray. We pray, Lord, for your will to be done on earth as it is in heaven for your kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven Lord we bring our lives before you today and Father as Karen comes and speaks to us we want to pray Lord our hearts want to listen to your word oh God come and speak to us today pray for Karen give her uh, confidence and boldness in you Lord uh, uh, and help us to hear you in Jesus name Amen Amen morning everybody. So this morning three times Jonathan said to me hope it goes okay. Clearly worried that it's not going to go okay. So we'll wait and see shall we. Okay so I thought we'd recap first of all on what's happened so far because actually I'm sure people have made a film about Esther and I'm sure there's more than one film. Because um, it's a very interesting book. It's also not the easiest book in the world to talk about, but there you go. Okay, so we're going to start with the scene. So you've got a king, and this king has a party for six months, as you do. And then he thinks, well, I've partied for six months. I'll let my servants have a little party as well. So he lets them party for seven days. So you can imagine he's in a good mood. And then he calls for his queen to come and say hi. <laughs> she says no. 
I'm glad I didn't have to speak on that chapter, by the way. <laughs> um, so he's not very happy about that, and he asks all his advisors, what am I going to do with a woman that says no? I bet you gentlemen have asked that more than once, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> so his advisors say, well, can't have that. If she says no to you, all our wives might do the same. <laughs> Better stop that. So he decides he doesn't want her to be his wife anymore. So his advisors then say, well, let's go and find somebody else as beautiful as she is. And they can, you know, we had a lot of wives, but she was a bit special. So the advisors went all over his kingdom and uh, came back with a number of um, prospective candidates, let's call them. And one of those was um, a girl called Esther. And Esther um, was looked after by a gentleman called Mordecai. And he looked after her because she was an orphan. Um, and they were also Jews. That's very important to the story, okay? So um, Esther came along, and she was a bit pampered. Well, she was a lot pampered, really, for a very, very long time. She was clearly very beautiful, but... Um, felt that she needed a little bit more work. So she was pampered for a very long time and then brought before the king. And the book of Esther tells us that the king loved her, that it wasn't just another one of his many women in his harem, that the king loved her. And she was a bit special to him, okay? Um, and somewhere along those lines, the advisors who had advised um, the king, for quite some time, were a bit put out because uh, the king made somebody prime minister, and that was the lovely Herman. Okay, and Herman wasn't that keen on Jews. He was a bit racist, to put it bluntly. Um, but he was very keen on power, uh, and he was very keen on keeping the king's favour and getting as much out of the king as he could. So, okay, let's, um, let's talk about what Haman does. Uh, and thank you very much, Pete, for reading the story out. We're going to go into a little bit more detail than um, the children's story, but it was, uh, it was a good start. Okay, so um, what happens is that Haman really, really doesn't like Mordecai. Really doesn't like him simply because a man thinks he's so important that everybody should bow to him and show him respect. And I mean everybody bar the king. Mordecai's having none of it. No, I do that for God. I'm not doing it for you, mate. A man doesn't like that very much for some strange reason. So he thinks, right, I don't, it's not enough that I do you, that I do something to you, I'm going to do something to all of the Jews because you've really annoyed me now. Um, so he goes to the king and a man's got a lot of money and he says, I'm going to give you tons of gold um, because I think you should annihilate this particular group of people. They don't follow the same rules as us. They don't follow the same laws. They're not really for you. And I think we should get rid of them. We should annihilate the whole lot of them. And the king says, okay then, I don't want your money, you can keep your money. Here's my ring, this is my royal seal. You go send the letters out to all the different provinces and say on March the 7th, that's when all the Jews will die. A man's very happy about that, exceedingly happy. So Mordecai hears about this. Guess what? He's not very happy. He's not very happy for himself. He's not very happy for Esther. And he's certainly not very happy for all his Jewish brothers and sisters. So he takes to his sackcloth and ashes. He fasts, he prays, he cries. And all of the Jews do the same. Now, if you imagine, Esther is way, way away from this. She's in a lovely palace and knows nothing until one of her um, um, people says... This is happening. Mordecai is in sackcloth and ashes. 
Uh, and they have a very close relationship. Mordecai has come into the palace to kind of look after Esther. So um, she sends a message back. Please stop. Here's some clothes. Don't, you know, look after yourself. Here's some clothes. And then Mordecai um, says, I need you to go to the king. You need to do something about this. And Esther says, I haven't seen the king in ages. I'm not the only one. I might be a bit special, but I'm not the only one. Uh, And Mordecai comes back to her and says, you need to do this. We need to save our people. And what he also says is, if you don't do it, somebody else will. Okay? So, then... Esther has a choice to make, doesn't she? She either keeps quiet and prays for somebody else to do it, or she listens to Mordecai. Sometimes it's easy to be inactive. Sometimes it's easy to say, I'm not going to do anything. And Esther decides that that's not what she wants. And in the end, she says, even if this costs me my life, I'm going to do it because I think it's the right thing. Not just for me, but for the whole nation of my people. Um, So she dresses up. She makes herself very beautiful, more beautiful. And you've got to imagine um, that in the palace, the king is sitting on his throne um, and she's not supposed to be there, funnily enough. Uh, and I, I imagine it would be with some fear and trepidation, but a lot of prayer, that she stands somewhere where the king can see her. Now, remember I said before, she doesn't, wasn't just one of his harem. It says the king loved her. So he spots her. And he's, he could go one or two ways. He could be very upset that she's come into his palace without his permission, because he's the king. But it doesn't go like that. He sends his scepter to her. He reaches his scepter. That's his way of giving her permission to come forward. And she doesn't just come and say, "Um, you need to help me. All of my people are going to die. What she does is she invites him for a meal. There's a lot. If you imagine in, in that court, there would have been a lot of people. She doesn't want lots of people there when she talks to him. She's very wise. So she says, why don't you come over to my place for a meal? And then she says, and and her man can come as well. Well, my word, does that make him feel even more special? She's invited me as well as the king. Get this. So they go for a meal. They have a lovely meal. And the king says, yet again, what do you want? I'll give you up to half my kingdom. Now, I read that a few times and I thought, he don't really mean that, does he? It's a bit of a saying, really, you know. If you, if you say to somebody you love them more than the whole world and things like that. But what he meant was, you know, if you want something, I'll give it to you. And yet again, she said, no, nah, let's have another meal together. I'll talk about it then. So her man leaves that place, and he is on cloud nine. Could things get any better? He's going to get Mordecai. He's going to get the Jews. He's been to a meal with just the king and queen. How special is that man? And then what happens? Just outside, there's Mordecai in his sackcloth and ashes. Oh, my word. That makes him very, very, very cross. Because yet again, Mordecai isn't bowing down to him, and he isn't showing him respect. So a man goes back to his advisors. His advisors are his friends and his wife. Now, the king's got lots of advisors, people who have a little bit more experience than the friends and his wife. And they say, yeah, it's not good, is it? He needs to go, and you need to set him up as an example. So why don't you erect a very large pole, 75 feet to be precise, and then tomorrow uh, go to the king and um, talk to him and get 
Mordecai stuck on that pole, making him an example of somebody who doesn't show respect. Nice, eh? Very nice. Okay, so let's have a little think about the character of, we'll call him H. Okay? What kind of man do you think her man was? Tell me what his characteristics were. Anything, go for it. Ambitious. Ambitious. Right, now, although I'm a teacher, my spelling is not the best, so if I get it wrong, don't hold it against me. Ambitious, what else? Hateful. Hateful. Yeah. Anything else? Evil. Pardon? Evil. Evil. I heard another one. Vindictive. 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 Yeah. Okay. Any more? Selfish? Very selfish. Any more? Over there? self indulged Ooh. Yeah. Proud. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. There's still one I need. Prejudiced. Thing. Yeah. Weak. Oh, interesting one. Hmm. Okay. I can't spell that out, so you're not having it. I might even have to look it up in the dictionary, but I don't disagree with you. <laughs> Again, I'm just going to go with I think he was just a bit bitter and twisted. Because I spell those. Is that okay? Okay. All right. Any of these? I mean, I think some of these we might be able to put our hand up to in ourselves, but my word, that's a very long list of nastiness. Okay. Oh, I've got another one. This is one that I think is... I think it was his arrogance that was his downfall in the end. He was so arrogant about his position and how important he was. Um, that, pardon? Ooh, okay. Well, I'll give you that one. I guess this is our God as opposed to whatever he chose to follow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So... I think what he did was he measured himself, his worth, by his power and his influence. I am great because I have a great deal of power and I have a great deal of influence. Um, so it wasn't, his, it wasn't his family that was... I don't think they weren't important to him, but I don't think they were the most important thing. It was his power and his position that he thought, I'm worth something. Right, let's have a look at M, Mordecai. What do you think of him? Oh, this one harder? Civil. Civil, okay. Yeah? Protective. Protective, yeah, he looked after... Esther, didn't he? What else? Considerate. Considerate. Yeah. Loving. Loving. Wise. Wise. Faithful. Faithful. Loyal. Loyal. He didn't, yeah. Determined. Determined. He didn't bow down to Haman. Haman, why not? God fearing. Okay. Happy with that? Anybody want to chuck in anything else? Humble. Humble, okay. Bit of a difference. Yeah? I'm going to put in something else. I'll tell you why in a minute. 
He was a jigsaw man. And I don't mean by that that he liked to do jigsaws, because they probably hadn't been invented then. Okay. He was a man also that used opportunities. We talked about him being wise, and he was a man that used opportunities he had. Um, sometimes, do we always use the opportunities we have, or do we sometimes wish for the opportunity that we want? Oh, if this happened, then I'd be able to do this, and I'd be able to do this, rather than actually using the opportunities that are in front of us. Okay, now, here come the coincidences. Okay, now, if, you, if it was the film, you'd say that wouldn't really happen. But here are the coincidences. So, coincidence number one. The king can't sleep, and he asks for the books on the history of his life, as you would. Uh, and previous to this, Mordecai has saved the king's life. And it's read in one of these history books. And he has a light bulb moment, coincidence, and says, hang on a minute, did I ever reward Mordecai for what he did? And his servants say, well, actually, not really. So he thinks, right, I'll need to do something about that. Now, the king always asks his advisors. So the king says, so who's around? Who can I ask about this? Coincidence number two. A man is out in the courtyard. So they bring him in. If it was a film, you'd say that wouldn't really happen. So the king says to him, uh, I could do with some advice. What should I give to a, a man that has served me well? Do you know the saying, pride comes before a fall? This is where it happens. So a man, oh, this is me. <laughs> he means me. Who else can he mean? So he says, right, um, I think, then, for somebody that's done that, you should give him your royal robe. You should give him your horse, not just any horse, the king's horse. He should have a royal emblem on his head. And you should get a prince, one of your princes, to dress him in those particular clothes. And then the prince should lead him through the streets. And the prince should say, this is what happens to those who the king wishes to honour. And the king says, you know what? I like all of those ideas. Go and do that for Mordecai. Oh, my word. <laughs> Pride comes before a fall. Can't begin to imagine how her man felt at this point. Not very good, I should think. So he went home. And he was, the Bible talks about him being completely, once he'd done it all, because the king said, well, not let a prince do that. You can lead him through the streets. He went home completely humiliated. And then he talked to his wife and his friends, and they were like, oh, well, Mordecai is a Jew. Perhaps you'd better not. Yeah, we've changed our minds. Really helpful. So... Haman is in a very difficult position now. Mordecai is sort of going up as he's coming down. But he's got another banquet to go to. So he thinks, right, we'll see how this goes. So they go to another banquet, just the king and queen and just Haman. And again, the king says, so what do you want? What do you want, Esther? What can I give you? And then she says, well, actually, I want my life and the life of my people. And he says, what do you mean? And then she tells him, because nobody knew that she was a Jew, she tells him, I'm a Jew, and her man has come to you to ask that all Jews be killed. So at this point, her man knows he's had it. And the king leaves very, very cross. And then her man makes his final, final mistake. His dad, Esther's there, king's gone, her man wants to beg Esther for his life. Unfortunately, it gets a little bit close to Esther, just as the king walks in. King's not happy. Thinks a man is trying to attack the beautiful queen. So that's it. Then the courtiers come and they know what's going to happen. So it says in Esther that um, a hood is put over his head. 
because the custom was if somebody was going to die, they did not get to look at the king. So as soon as that hood is on his head, he knows he's finished. And actually the pole that he's erected for Mordecai is the one that he's stuck on. Okay. So that's how the story goes. Do you know, when you, um, when you stand up here to speak, it's not about just telling a story. The, the word of God says that his it, scripture is a two-edged sword. Um, and for me, one of the things when you stand up to speak, it's about hearing God and knowing what you ask. I ask God, what do you want me to say that you want to say to anybody? Okay, so I'm going to talk about the last one in a minute, but I want you to think about these things first. We all talk about God being in control. And for some of us, in some of the situations we find ourselves in, I completely get that that sometimes is difficult to believe and it's difficult to hold on to. We all believe that God is in control, but sometimes we need to take action. Esther and Mordecai knew that God was in control, but they both took action. Okay? Haman really, really, really hated Mordecai and the Jews. I'm going to read, if I can find it, a lovely verse from Proverbs. If you set a trap for others, you will get caught in it yourself which is exactly what happened to her man. If bitterness grows, it can absolutely eat away at you. Um, we've had a bit of um, a makeover of our garden in the summer, um, and we had two holly bushes, and I absolutely blinking hated them, because they, they drop their holly leaves, and you're picking them, and they prick you and everything. Um, so we got rid of one. I thought, no, nope, don't want either of them. So the gardener was around one day, and there was a holly bush and another tree. Um, and he said, what do you want me to do? I said, I want that tree down. Um, and then he came the next day, and he said to Jonathan, which tree was it? And Jonathan pointed. He said, oh, I don't know. So the gardener got rid of both the trees, just in case. <laughs> Yay. Um, actually, it does look better, to be fair. Um, and then yesterday, the gardener came round again, because he's doing a bit more work. And um, in the ground, near where the holly tree had been, I said, what, what's this growing here? I didn't plant that. He said, oh, that's a bit of a holly tree. And I said, what's that? He said, oh, that's another bit of a holly tree. He said, I thought I'd got all the roots out, but clearly I haven't. And bitterness and anger is a bit like my lovely holly tree that I couldn't stand. If you do not get rid of all of it, it will grow again. And my personal take on it is bitterness is really hard to get, to absolutely cut out without Jesus and a bit of help. But if you don't, then those roots will grow again. And in Mordecai's life, my, in Haman's life, my word was the bitterness and resentment and hate, and it cost him his life. Whereas the difference is this is the Old Testament, and we live in the New Testament, and we have the power of Jesus in our lives, and we... we need to make sure that if we are aware that there is bitterness, that we actually don't try to dig it all up on our own, uh, but that we go to our Heavenly Father for a bit of help, because we'll need it. Okay, I talked about him being a jigsaw man. I, I know I've done this one before, but it, it means so much to me. Um, Sometimes we don't always see the whole picture. 
when Esther was taken to the court, Mordecai didn't know the whole picture of what was going to happen. And in our lives, it's really challenging for us when it's hard to see all the jigsaw pieces fitting together. And sometimes it's really hard to have faith to believe that God will put all those jigsaw pieces together. And sometimes the only thing that we can hang on to is the faith that God gives us that that will happen. And sometimes we have to ask for more faith because it's hard. Okay. Um, and alongside that, don't fall into the trap of thinking that um, nothing's happening and that your prayers aren't being answered and that the only thing left is the natural order of things. Well, it's going to happen anyway. This is what happens. You have to remember that we serve a supernatural God. So don't just fall back on, well, it's the natural order of things. Okay, the last one, and poor Chris, I said to him last week, I'd like you, uh, I'd love to be, you to be able to do the song Imagine. <laughs> you did it all right, I thought. Uh, and he, he collared me this morning and said, well, that was easy, not. The reason why I wanted that song is because as Christians, sometimes we need to have perspective. Perspective on where we're going and where we'll where we'll spend eternity and what that will look like. And in, this, in the book of Esther, you've got a woman and a man that were willing to serve God whatever the cost. They had that perspective. If I die, I die. But God is in control. And it's just a matter, and it's not easy. None of, none of what I'm saying to you today is always easy to do, and you can't do it unless you involve God in it. And sometimes you need to involve other Christians to work with you on what's a problem and what you're finding hard. And sometimes you need the help of other Christians to be praying with you and working with you on gaining that correct perspective. Because if your perspective is skewed then you do tend just to default back to the natural order of things rather than the supernatural order of things. So in a minute, um, Chris has very kindly said he'll sing that song again. Uh, and I want you to ask God to put that perspective back into your lives if you think you've lost it. And if anything um, that's been said this morning, God is, is giving you a bit of a poke please take that as something to show that God loves you beyond measure and that it's his opportunity to say, let's work on this together. I've been challenged very much um, um, when I was preparing this in an aspect of my life. Um, and it is about get perspective. Look at the supernatural as well as just defaulting back to the natural order of things. Okay, thank you very much. Chris? Sorry, I'm changing things, I know. Yeah.
You know, and this morning, just, let's just pray a minute where you are and bring the jigsaw bits of your life. You know, God sees the whole picture. God knows the whole picture. He's got the corner pieces, the edge pieces, the whole thing. He's got the picture he's making it from. And he is in control. It doesn't seem like it when we've just got the one piece or the two pieces. And we're asking. And it's just good to come before Father now. Lord, we just come before you and Bring the jigsaw pieces of our life, Lord. The questions, you know, we've got questions, Lord, about what's happening and why things are happening and what's going on. But, Lord, today's an opportunity to say, Father, we trust you. Today's an opportunity to say, Lord, you have the big picture. Today's an opportunity to say, Lord, you are working out all things in our lives, you know, for your purpose and for your glory. We don't see it all, but, Lord, we choose you. Jesus. And we say, Lord, we want to follow you. And Lord, take the pieces of our lives and the, the, the bits that, that we don't really understand what's going on. Take them, Lord, and make your picture. Bring about your plan and your purpose, Lord. Uh, Father, we thank you, Lord, that you love us so much. We thank you, Lord, for Jesus this morning. And we thank you, Lord, that you have plans and purposes for every single one of us and you're working them out, Lord. Help us, God, each day, day by day, to trust you, to take that step of faith, Lord, and trust you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, Jesus. I wanted to sing and, and um, I think finish actually with There Is A Day because as Karen was saying that, you know, we don't know the big picture. <clears throat> we don't know how those jigsaw bits fit together, but God does. And this is another one of those songs that's quite prophetic in nature and talks about God fitting all those things together.
death is now swallowed up We will meet him in the air And then we will be like him For we will see him as he is Oh yeah Then all attack they will see So lift your eyes to the things as yet unseen that will remain now for all eternity. Though troubles hard, it's only moment. It's achieving our future glory. Thank you, Lord. We will meet Him in the air, and then we will be like Him, for we will see Him as He. And we'll be with Him forever And in His glory we will live Oh yeah, oh yeah Lift your eyes to the things as yet unseen will remain now for all eternity. Though trouble's hard, it's only momentary. And it's achieving our future glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All through this morning from earlier on when uh, Chris did the Water into Wine song and there's a line in that that says, um, if our God is for us, who can be against us? I was reminded of the expression, a line in the sand, and apologies to any historians in the room, but this, the, that expression comes from a story about um, a, an army attacking a, a village or a town in North Africa in ancient times. And in that town there was one man who went out to meet this army and he drew a line in the sand and he said, I'm a Roman soldier. If you cross this line, you're not taking on me, you're taking on the empire. And that is a sense of all that Karen's been telling us and the story of Esther is that if, you, if, if the enemy takes on one of his, they take on him. And David, when he, when he was confronting Goliath, Goliath was trying to in, uh, isolate each man and terrify each man. But David said, you have defied the armies of the living God. So that, that's the sense of feeling this morning is that 
whatever we are under, whatever threats or um, intimidation from the enemy we're under, we stand with the armies of the living God. Let's just pray a minute as we close, shall we? Yeah, Father, we want to thank you for, you know, our lives are lived out in this eternal context. We want to thank you our lives are lived out. Jesus, that one day you will return. Uh, and I want to pray as we go from this place, Lord, that you will help us in the coming days to see the things that are going on and the things that we're all facing day by day in a different context, Lord. In a context that you are in control. In a context that one day you will return, Jesus, for a bride that has made itself ready. Uh, and that, Lord, you are a God who we can trust and walk with and submit our plans and purposes to. Father, we just also want to pray in, out of that today for just a few people that are poorly, Lord. We pray for Tony, who needs your healing, Lord. We pray for Heather, who needs your healing. We pray for Sally, Lord, who needs your healing. And I, and I dare say there's others, Lord. We just want to reach out to you, Father, this morning for a, a touch and for your healing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just let's say the grace together, shall we, as we finish. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you, everybody. A reminder, there's cards here and the Meadowhead cards here. Please come and have a look and make your donations. Thank you.